Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Reactor Essentials. And I will probably have to find a new name for this. So let's uh, create a new project. Uh, just go into IntelliJ or whatever ID you are using, select Maven. Then just give a nice name to your project. I will name it uh, Project Reactor Essentials. And then you click on Finish. And then you will see this nice page if you are using IntelliJ IDEA. You can enable annotation processors because we are going to use it. So uh, we need project reactor dependencies. So this is just a blank project. We don't have anything. So we are going to start giving some uh, dependencies here. So the first dependency that we are going to add is the project reactor itself. So let's uh, create the tag dependencies. And inside dependencies, just create one called dependency. And then artifact ID, we can just call it reactor core. IO project reactor. The latest version is 335. We are going with this one. So IntelliJ now is not uh, downloading automatically. We have to click on this button right here or just use a shortcut. So take a look at the dependencies we have two dependencies one is the reactive strings do you remember reactive strings is just a standard and if we go into this dependency you will see that we have only these four interfaces and these class flow adapters so basically the reactive strings tells uh, the is like the contract but these four they have more than 30 rules for people implementing the methods on this one so what we are going to do, uh, we have here the reactor core, and uh, you will see that we have a lot of information inside. But we also need another dependency, it's the reactor test. So just add one more dependency here. This dependency will be called reactor dash test. And the version is exactly the same. So just uh, get here. And you can add this to the properties and you can uh, replace all and then here you can add the uh, just move this up and you can add here java dot version i will use java 11 and uh, another one that you can add is the maven dot compiler dot source otherwise it will use by default if i'm not wrong java Five. Maven compiler source and Maven compiler target. Okay, now that we have uh, what we need, there is a couple more thing. We need uh, if we're going to work with tests, we need some JUnit here. So let's add the JUnit dependency. Uh, it's JUnit Jupyter API. Let's use the latest one, milestone one five seven zero. What else? Uh, we can use the Lombok as well. So I will just put some annotation here. These are the test dependencies. And then I will add Lombok. The latest version as well. We can move this up and this is one also up. And another dependency that we need is um, something to use with the at SLF4J from Lombok. We can add uh, the SLF4J, we could use something different, but the SLF4J will do for us. So here I'm going to use SLF4J API, the latest version, no, I'm not going with alpha, let's go with 1730. And then we need an implementation for this guy. We can use the SLF4J simple, what is it? Okay same 170 we just move this up as well and then we refactor replace all and it looks like now we have all the dependencies that we need so let's go into the tests so remember this is just a tutorial like uh, how we get into the reactive programming so i will explain the concepts uh, pieces by pieces and then later on we will probably have spring web flux where we are going to put together what we are learning here so let's create a package called academy.devdojo. 
and let's call these uh, reactive and then test and let's create the first class it will be mono test so this mono test will be the test that we will be playing let's just use slf4j here slf and i forgot to import the dependencies from maven you can see all the dependencies here slf4j and just to finish this class with something good let's try and see if everything is working uh, just write test and then just log.info everything working as intended then you execute this test and we have the project set up Let's continue in the next video.